1179, a boy was born, born on the farm on the west side of Iceland. The midwife tries to wake up Sturla Thorlason, who sleeps hard. Sturla, Sturla, a boy has been born. What did you say? Now you will be surprised. It was not a girl as you predicted, but a boy, fat and patty. Snotty's brother went to the bed to look at the new family member. They were not too happy about the new brother and thought he was quite swollen and weird. But they still felt that he was worthy of his name, Snorri Goli. What is the name in Portuguese and Ugar? He quickly got used to life in Otta. He quickly became literate and was good at writing. Snorri was absorbed in all the reading material he could get his hands on. He especially thought it was important to learn the history of Norwegian kings. Snorri got a letter from the priest Barse in Borg <clears throat> Dear Snorri, Thank you for your letter last week. I would like if you offered Famslandet in return for my daughter, Herdis. She's the most valuable bride in the country. She seems to like you, and I'm quite fond of Famslandet. This could be a good exchange for the both of us. What do you say about a marriage this summer in Kwame? Snorra and Herdis married 1199. At that time, Snorra was 20 years old. In 1215, he became jurisdiction officer at only 35. The marriage went well. They had two children, Hafra and Jan. However, the agreement between Herdis and Snorri's mother, Guðni, went horribly. I demand to be in control of this house. I'm supposed to be a main housewife here. I think not. I have been in control of my own for 20 years, and I'm going to keep that up. You can control your bed. The marriage ended in divorce, but Snorri went on to have three more kids in addition to Hafra and Jan. Their names were Ingibjörg, Thordís, and Oraika. Snorri now began preparations to his first trip abroad by sending a poem to Norway that he had written to a mighty earl whose name was Haukon Folkdarsson. The poem was a hit and Snorri was invited to come to Norway. Since Norwegians are extremely angry with Icelanders, in particular people of Ottish, then I promise that Norwegian merchants will be allowed to trade in peace in Iceland. Snorri continued to strengthen his empire after returning home. He mar married his daughters to rulers. Marriages created for economic reasons usually are not successful. Divorce results in discord, and little by little the bloodlines became less and less connected, so it stopped being important for peace. When Snorri heard that his brother and Sturla had fallen, fallen in the battle, he was sad and thought these news really sad to say the least. Most of all, he wanted to get to Iceland as soon as possible. However, there were travel restrictions in Norway, so Snorri was not allowed to leave the country. But Snorri had a determined mind and completely ignored the king's ban and left Norway. A little later, there was a rebellion in Norway. The news of this was not good for Snorri, as the king could think that he was trying to work against him in Iceland. King Haukon therefore decided to write to his courtier in Iceland, Gissur Thorvaldsson. In this letter, Haukon describes Snorri as a treasoner and traitor to him because of Snorri's support for Skúla's rebellion. King Haukon ordered Gissur to start an attack on Snorri and either get him out of the country or kill him. Gissur obeyed the king and he, with a group of 70 men, went to Reykholt at night and took Snorri completely by surprise. Where should I go? Oh, uh, go to the basement. I will delight them and tell them that you run away. Okay. Where is Snorri? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Snorri has been found in the basement of the house. Someone in army, go into the basement and do what they are, are supposed to do. Now it's a still story. You should not kill me. Kill him. <laughs> Whether we could say that Snorri was killed by treachery or not, Icelanders have long been angry with Gissur Thorvaldsson for having him killed. This is perhaps because Snorri was a great writer and people would have imagined that he would have written more great books if he lived long. Woo!